Hey everyone, welcome to part 17 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we will refractor some of the things in our battle system so that we'll easily be able to implement features like status moves in the future. So for the last two weeks, I was working on features like stat boosting moves and status conditions and I have implemented all the status conditions like burn, sleep, poison and all. So in the upcoming videos, I'll be covering all these one by one. And I have posted the project files for these features in my Patreon. So you can check it out in case you want to see how they are implemented before the videos come out. Alright, so let's start refactoring our battle system. Okay, so first I'm going to rename some of the states in our battle system. So we have a player move state, which is actually move selection. And then we have a perform player move and enemy move which is responsible for performing the moves so right now it's kind of confusing if this is enemy move then i want this to be named as player move right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rename this into move selection and i'll rename this to player move so we can just right click on this function and select rename or we can just choose a shortcut control r r so I'll just use a shortcut to rename this to move selection and I'll rename the perform player move to just player move and I'll rename the player action to action selection okay so now we have renamed all the functions but let's also rename the name of the states. So once again, I'll rename the player action state to action selection, player move to move selection. And I don't need a separate state for enemy move and player move. We can set a state like perform move when the player or enemy is performing the move. So I'll just remove the enemy move state and Add a new state called perform move and inside the player move I'll set the state to perform move instead of busy and even in the enemy move function I'll set the state to perform move instead of the enemy move state that we previously had all right so now I think the name of the states and functions are much more clear so we have enemy move player move move selection, party screen, and action selection. So next, I want to encapsulate some of the common logic in our battle system. So let me show you what I mean. So if you look at the player move function and the enemy move function, the logic in here is like almost same, right? Except for the part like how the move is selected and what happens when, when the Pokemon faints. So all the logic from here to here is like, it's like almost same, but it's the opposite, right? So in the player move, we do the opposite of what we do in the enemy move. Now the problem is when we implement things like stat boosting moves and status conditions and all, this logic will become even bigger and we'll have to change it in both the enemy move and the player move functions. So instead of doing that, I'll put all this logic inside a run move function. So I'll create a function called run move, which will also be a coroutine. And for the first parameter, it will take a battle unit called the source unit. The second parameter will be target unit. And the third one will be a reference to the move. Okay, so the source unit is the unit that is attacking or performing the move and the target unit is the target for that move right and this run move will contain all the logic like playing animation of the move taking damage and all that so what i'll do is i'll copy the code that is currently doing all that from the player move function and i'll paste it inside my run move so in this code, 
source unit should be the one to attack instead of the player unit right so I'll just add multiple cursors and change player unit to source unit all right so now so the source unit we pass will be the one performing the move and similarly we need to change the enemy unit into target unit so that target unit will be the one to take the damage and play hit animation and all that so I'll add multiple cursors and rename enemy unit to target unit okay so next all the logic till here is same the only difference is what we should do when the target unit faints right if the enemy is the one who fainted we can simply stop the battle but if, if it's player unit who fainted then we need to check if there are any other healthy pokemons and let the player choose the next one this logic right so if the target unit fainted then here i'll call another function which will decide what to do next okay so i'll create a function called check for battle over and this function will take the unit that fainted since we'll be calling this when one of the unit faints and inside this function we need to run a different logic based on whether the fainted unit is a player unit or an enemy unit right so inside here I'll check if the fainted unit is a player unit but we haven't exposed that in our battle unit so let's go inside our battle unit we have a variable called is player unit so I'll just create a property to expose that and inside the getter of the property I'll just return is player unit variable okay so now in here we can check if the fainted unit is actually a player unit or if it's an enemy unit right so if the player fainted then we should run this logic and if the enemy fainted all we have to do is just call on battle over true so in the else I'm just going to call on battle over true and if the player unit fainted then I'll check if there is any other healthy Pokemons in the party and if there is then I'll just open the party screen and otherwise I'll just call on battle over and pass false since the player lost the battle and inside the run move if the target unit fainted we'll just call check for battle over and pass the target unit for the fainted unit okay so now in the player move and enemy move instead of writing all this logic I can just call my run move function so let me just call that and in case of the enemy, enemy move the source unit will be the enemy unit the target unit will be the player unit and I'll just pass a reference to the move and once the run move is complete we will go back to action selection so that player can select the next action okay so let's do the same inside the player move also and in case of player move the source unit will be player unit the target unit will be enemy unit and we'll pass a reference to the move and once it's complete we'll just call enemy move okay so we have encapsulated all the logic of player move and enemy move into the run move function and now we can easily add new features like status moves and all to it without changing the code in both places but there's one problem right now once the run move is complete 
we only want to go to the next step if the battle is not over right the run move might end the battle if one of the pokemon faints so in that case we don't want to go to the next step but right now we don't have a way of knowing if the battle is over or not so for that i will create a new state called battle over and i'll create a function to to trigger the battle over state just like we have for all the other states okay so inside this function i'll set the state to battle over and i'll also call the on battle over event and yeah we need to pass the boolean to specify if the battle was won or lost so i'll take that as a parameter and then just pass it to the on battle over event so battle over is a function that triggers the battle over state and on battle over is actually an event that notifies the game controller that the battle is over right so don't get confused between these two so now in the check for battle over function instead of just calling the battle over event i'll call the battle over function so that state will also be set all right let me change that here also so now once the run move is completed if one of the pokemon is fainted so in that case we don't want to go to the next step right so here i'll just add a simple if condition checking if the state is still equal to the perform move and only then we want to go to the next step right so let's add that in our enemy move also and let me just add a comment here all right so we are almost done with the refracting but there is one more thing that we need to fix so inside our run move to update the hp in the hud you can see that we are calling enemy hud dot update hp right but we need to do that on the hud of the target unit and the target unit can either be enemy unit or the player unit so what i'll do is instead of defining the player and enemy huds inside the battle system itself i'll define it inside the battle unit so i'm going to remove the player hud and enemy hud and inside our battle unit class i'm going to add the battle hud and i'll just call it hud and we need a property to expose it and finally if you look at the battle system you can see that we are calling set data function on the hut while setting things up so we have to do that inside our battle unit class right so i'll just just do that in the setup of the battle unit Okay, so for the Pokemon, I can just pass the Pokemon Oxygen unit. So now we can remove these lines from our battle system. And let's check where else we have the errors caused by removing the hut. So yeah, we have one over here. So here instead of calling enemy hut dot update HP, I will call target unit dot hut dot update hp and yeah we have one more error over here so let me scroll there and it's because we are calling player hud dot set data but we don't have to call that because it's already being called from inside the setup function of the battle unit so i guess we are done with all the refactoring and now the code of our battle system is much more neat i guess All right, so let's test if everything is working as usual. So I'll go to Unity 
and try to test the game okay so if i start a battle oh we have an error okay that's because we haven't assigned the player and enemy hud into the player and enemy units right so i'll assign the player hud to player unit and enemy hud to the enemy unit okay and let's test the game now let me start a battle all right let me just do a move yeah it's working as usual and let's test pokemon switching to check if there is anything wrong with that even that is still working fine okay so the enemy lost and we are back in our free roam state so yeah everything is working just like before all right so i'll stop the video here and in the next video we will look at how to implement status moves that can increase or decrease the stats of the pokemon so if you think this video is helpful consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like on this video to help the channel grow and i'll see you in the next video